What's up, good people? How's the going? Ramadan Karim to the Muslim brethren. I hope the holy month is taking you really well. And as you might have already guessed, it's Bash Mutumba's voice tickling your speaker. And I'm here to bring you another episode of Ugandan Juice. Well, we'll just delve straight into it. And uh, first off, social media tax. Damn, social media tax. This is a, this has been a very infamous topic for a very long time since its inception, and it came up with the, the the mobile money tax together and the mobile money tax was at one percent per transaction one percent of the money you send will be taxed off you on top of the other taxes that are there and the wood charges and all that stuff so it was crazy and people protested social media and mobile money tax well mobile money tax was uh, changed from 1% to 0.5 but then social media tax even though most people looked at it as something weird but till today we still pay social media tax as it was incepted till today people tried the VPNs and all that stuff but it was really really hard so when you're in Uganda you cannot use social media before paying 200 shillings per day it looks small but it's very burdensome is because weekly it's more than that and every month it's 6,000 Uganda shillings every month for you to access social media. If you don't pay any of that, you cannot. And well, recently MPs after realizing that it's actually a burdening thing, they decided to change it up and ask government or try to make up a motion that the Ugandans themselves should actually pay their taxes. And this has already been passed actually. And we are going to be paying taxes for the MPs. Well, those are our people. Those are our people. But um, it's very hard to believe where they get such ideas because the truth, the truth is our data is already expensive in Uganda. That's one thing for a fact. As countries like Rwanda, uh, Kenya, Tanzania try to encourage internet usage, we the Ugandans who have the least percentage of internet usage are the ones discouraging it. I do not know the idea that they come up with or which angle they use to tax the internet or social media but really it's not something something really impressive to the people like us, the lower people that earn wages, that do not earn a lot of money like the MPs with over 20 million shillings in just salaries before you talk of the allowances and all that stuff, really. And they say they cannot pay such taxes well how will the rest of us manage crazy crazy and uh, most people end up saying that well do not worry all the mps that have supported this are going to leave office very soon in less than two years well i beg to disagree because in the end even the opposition politicians that claim to be against these moves they will not refuse that money they will not refuse the free 5gb every month that will be given regardless of the hundreds of million uganda shillings that are going to be spent on that they will not refuse all that money not at all Yes, and later, actually, there is one interesting um, argument that I read on Twitter by an NTV Uganda journalist or news anchor, that's Josephine Karunji. A fan was trying to say the same thing, that they will leave office very soon because we can't support such people. And Josephine had this to tell him, no guarantee of that. We are in an abusive relationship with our politicians and we keep taking them back even after they have beaten us into a coma and stolen all our savings to build houses for their side people. We forgive and forget and expect angels. And actually that's very accurate from Josephine. That's very typical of Ugandan, uh, Ugandan people. Ugandans are very very forgetful people. After a few months, they, they shall have forgotten about all this and they'll just continue paying the taxes and the MPs will be enjoying themselves. So really, what's the fuss about? Anyway, uh, on, the, on the brighter side of things, we'll talk about APAS. Of course, here in Uganda, I'll tell you this, Bebe Cool and APAS are the only two people that really know how to tickle media. They really know how to tickle tabloids, they know how to get attention, they know how to do publicity stunts. They understand this very well. And remember APAS's two million haircut a few years ago? How it it had it made headlines everywhere just because they said this haircut was of two million shillings and he tried pushing it on all these social media platforms and people were big we were debating that what haircut is two million shillings just like that. Uh, for him to later come up and say, Well, the haircut is called the two million haircut. I didn't say I spent two million shillings on it. Something crazy. Well recently he had a new look, amazing look I should say. Yeah, he had a new look with uh, dreads and a side being cut off. Very amazing look. And what Epas actually said or tweeted 
when you posted that photo was we spent approximately 10 million shillings on this one and as you can see i always manage to look better than the rest <laughs> chupa kuchupa and he, he actually um, took this photo with roland really yes roland or manzi and uh, the, ha the haircut or hairstyle was made by hair by ziwa i have something uh, crazy about I've heard about uh, Ziwa's, Ziwa's hair, but one thing I can't really confirm is the fact that it reached 10 million shillings. I know it's expensive to do hair with Ziwa because it's not even less than 10,000 shillings. The average haircut a Ugandan might take or might have will be at least mm, 4,000 shillings average because it can be lower than that or even higher by like 1,000 shillings. But Apus claims it's a 10 million shillings look. And in that very video that he later posted, he, he, he took a dig at someone, I'm not sure whether it's Flavia or, or whatever, because uh, in that entire thing, he actually mentioned someone being bald and Flavia's uh, husband or fiance is not bald, but he had a sleek hairstyle. Of course, like I said, he, has, uh, he had shoes, Louis Vuitton shoes, a designer suit and a car that is he called something like benzito benz toyota anyway it's a very hilarious video and uh, a pass a pass a pass he doesn't perform anywhere but he he still earns from his music how social media he understood the art of marketing himself on social media well on the other side of things eddie kenzo the golden boy of uganda He's keeping uh, us proud. He's making us proud every single day. And this particular time, Eddie Gwenzo is set to perform at Harmonize's show in Nangwanda Sijaona Stadium. And that's in Mutwara District in Tanzania. And, well, as I once told you, Eddie Kenzo is not appreciated enough here in Uganda. In fact, he's not appreciated at all. He's the kind of person that release, releases very, very good music videos. He's the one that started that revolution of having beautiful music videos in Uganda. Many musicians looked at him as someone wasteful, but he was looking at the future. He never did very fake uh, Ugandan music videos. Even when he was doing something cinematic, something African, the videos were still high quality. Look at City Alos. It was a very high quality video, even though it was in the setting of a village like Karamoja. Good costume, good everything, great audio. So really, Eddie Kenzo, is making us proud and uh i remember the first time he turned into dance music yes th that he turned straight into dance music and stopped singing mainstream um ugandan afrobeat many people looked at him, looked down on him and told him he's going to fail and stuff like that but then later just a few months when city loss was a hit all over the world everyone began to backtrack and, and say we are proud of Kezo and things of the sort. After them seeing Didier Drogba, Emmanuel Adibayo, Ellen DeGeneres, when they were all praising the kind of guy, and after him winning things like the Nickelodeon Awards, and after him doing shows in West Africa, Kezo actually, I think he's the only Ugandan artist that does shows in West African stadiums. There is no other Ugandan. He's the most sought after Ugandan artist on social media, I should say on YouTube in simple terms. And one time I was watching a, a, a YouTube interview and the interviewer called Kenzo a legend and asked him and told him, should I tell you why I call you a legend? And, and Kenzo said, please go on. And the guy told him his Maria Rosa video, not even the official one, but the one with comedians dancing to it, has close to 30 million views. It has more views than all top hit songs by top artists in Uganda. And I know many people might dispute this. They might say, no, YouTube is not a benchmark for looking at good music or amazing music. But I'll tell you this, YouTube is actually an avenue for looking at great music in this digital era. Because if, if you might know your history a little well, back then, uh, people used to look at hard copy sales or record sales as the biggest benchmark for seeing a hit song. Yeah, that this that this song has sold one million copies in America. This song has sold this number of digital records in America. Not digital records, hard copy records in America. But in this digital age, people actually listen to iTunes. Yes, music is on iTunes. People stream on Spotify. People no longer buy hard copy records, no. And people watch YouTube. 
you get so really if you say youtube is not a benchmark then i'll laugh at you that's why songs like gangnam style had amazing youtube views and there were hit songs all over the world that's why songs like despacito were big songs on youtube because there were big songs all over the world so really that argument anyone that starts it to claim youtube is not a benchmark you just laugh at him and let him be because in, in fact that's why big labels like the universal music and sony music labels that started the benchmark of counting or or, or, or looking at great music they are the same labels that started up that uh, idea of vevo on youtube because they know how amazing youtube is anyway that's an argument for another day but when harmonize revealed that kenzo will be performing many of his fans were like wow we would really want to see kenzo perform they, they were so excited to see kenzo and this actually makes me wonder which Ugandan artist has recently performed at a major show in Tanzania ever since the times of Jose Chameleon back then when he was a hit all over East Africa. I really don't remember anyone. But this reminds me actually of uh, my Tanzanian friend that I have at the university. Uh, he once told me that before coming to Uganda, the only Ugandan musicians he knew were Jose Chameleon, Reddy and Rizzo, Juliana and Eddie Kenzo. And I was wondering how come he would know Eddie Kenzo yet he didn't know Shiba Karunji or Fake Famaika. But anyway, I guess now the reason is a little obvious to me and you and everyone else. Well, that's all from me today. Let's catch up next time. Till then, good people.